So today what we're going to do is we're going to do some pranayama. So pranayama means breath work. It means it's the yoga of your breath, if you like. So <clears throat> this is something that we just do every day. We just breathe in and out, in and out every day. We don't think about it until we can't. And then we really think about it a lot until we can breathe again. But basically it's, it's something that's just happening all the time, every day. You know, from the moment you're born till the moment we die, you know, we take one breath and it's the last breath. So, it, and this is just this thing that happens, it just goes on, but we don't consciously do it. This sort of is in another system in, in the back of the body that just takes care of them things. So it's not in our mind, it's, it's in a place further back. It keeps the heart beating, it regulates the dietary system, all of these things. And the breath comes in and out. <clears throat> when you start to understand the breath a little bit more, you understand that this is where really all of your life force is coming from. Yes, we get you know life force from food and water and things like this, but we can live without food for you know long period of time. We will get complications and and you know we won't be overly well, but we will not just die. You know, and the same with water, we can go, you know, days without water. And then, we, you know, there is complications. And eventually, if you don't get any water or food, you will die. But you're not going to die straight away. Now, try holding your breath for a few days. So, you know, you can't, you know, most people will get to about 35 to 40 seconds before that sensation in the mind goes i want to breathe in you know if you've breathed out and you're holding the exhale pretty soon within about 30 seconds there's this anxiety that comes up and the message in the brain of i want to breathe in so this is really the only time that we sort of would ever be conscious of it in in a normal life situation unless you've just run up a hill or down a hill and you've got you know that full cardio and then you, you're breathing really hard but generally we don't pay any attention to the breath whatsoever. We just sort of let it happen. And, and even when we're running, we're not really thinking about breathing. You know, we just know that we're breathing harder. Sometimes there's not thought behind it. But when we bring consciousness to the breath and we start to control the breath, then we can really start to energize our body and, and feel the benefits of that. So generally you'll find when you're stressed or uh, under tension, what happens is, is the breath goes really short. It goes into little choppy breaths. It's like, <laughs> like this, you see. So what's happening is, is the body then is not getting enough prana, enough oxygen. Hello. Look, here we have. Nico's been outside in the rain and she's decided to share it with me. So we it manifests as anxiety in the body. So... We take them deep breaths and we slow everything down and you'll notice when you in take them deep inhalations what happens is the body is getting enough oxygen enough prana into it and the, and the system you know the internal system starts to balance itself out it's, it's the classic saying of you know calm down take a few breaths but what that means is is that you've stopped breathing you're now in a state of anxiety which is manifesting as stress, probably for you and other people around you. So we need to, and as you take them few breaths, you feel the body calms down, the heartbeat slows down a little bit, and the mental chatter slows down a little bit. So generally, you know, we can become more reasonable about a situation or calmer and able to handle the situation if we get them nice, big, deep breaths in. So what we're going to do, um, four different exercises tonight. So the first one is um, called the Ujjayi breath. So a translation of that is sometimes it's known as the victorious breath or the warrior's breath. Now this is a breath that um, generally you would use during your Ashtanga practice, um, sorry, your Vinyasa practice. So when you're flowing, you're kind of looking for this engagement of the pelvic floor and the tummy drawn in. So the breath is up and into the chest here. 
So what that does by drawing the tummy in, it gives you, that's where you create your space when you start to move through your vinyasa, like if you're stepping back to front, you kind of want to lift this up and out of the way to create room to go through. So what we're going to do is just a little exercise because really it's, it's a sound as much as it is a breath. The breath isn't, it's in and out through the nose, but it's not a sniff through the nose. It's like you're, you're inhaling deeply into, like deep into the back of the throat. So the tongue sort of retracts a little bit just to restrict the throat. And then you open the throat like, uh, a good way to describe it is, is if you've ever been sat with somebody and they're just talking and talking and talking, like now, and you just get tired, you just want to yawn, but they're sat right in front of you and you can't. So you kind of do that. And you see how that sort of like breathes into the back of the throat here. That's kind of what you're looking to do. Breathe deep into the, into the collarbones, into the chest. With the tummy engaged and the pelvic floor lifted. So the chest lifts and falls. This breath is good for not only your practice, like in Ashtanga, this is the breath. You have to use this breath from the beginning of your practice right the way through. Some practices will use it maybe for a little bit and then, you know, go to different breath work what, during, the, du, during the class. But it's also really good for <clears throat> if you've got uh, like a cold or mucus, like congestion around this area, what it does is by, because you're opening up all of this channel here in the back of the throat, it really clears that mucus away. Okay, so first we're going to do is just take an inhale and on the exhale, we're just going to say the word H-A, heart, like H-A. So, ha. So you feel the shape of the throat. is It has to open a little bit in order to create that Ha ah, sound. Inhale. Ah. Okay, so close the mouth this time. Inhale. And this time, exhale through the nose. But imagine you're making that sound in the back of the throat. So you can try and do it like vocally, or you can imagine the sound in your mind that you're going. So you see how that becomes like a because it can't be verbalized out of the mouth. So the inhale, so it's almost like a Darth Vader type voice. So you want this. So if you close your eyes and you do this breath, it should almost sound like, like a wave coming up and onto the beach and just rolling off the beach as well. Sometimes it's known as the, the wave breath. So close your eyes and then just try and make that noise of the wave coming in and up the shore. And then... So you should be starting to get that feel of that now, how the throat is kind of open, it breathes down into the chest. So this time, we're going to lift the pelvic floor, draw the belly button in, so the breath only goes into the chest, so the belly doesn't come in and out. So if you think, lift the pelvic floor, it's almost like you're trying to hold a pee. So you lift the pelvic floor, draw the belly button in, and then you can take a full inhalation without the tummy going in and out. So I shall show you.
so you feel that now the sound of that how the tummy is in so the ribs have to expand and lift for this this is what gives you the space to move into your forward bends and, and such things during your practice but also you can hear that how that the sound of that breath coming in with the eyes closed and going out it's really loud in the head it's it's like a mantra a mantra is like om you know you would repeat om which would center the mind it would bring the mind into a single point of focus so if we use that sound of the breath if we just sit comfortably shoulders relaxed eyes are closed lift the pelvic floor gently draw the tummy in take an exhale and just do five of those breaths just focus on the sound of the breath breathing deep into the chest keeping the belly in and the pelvic floor lifted when you're ready inhale Last one. And then just return to gentle, normal abdominal breathing. Keep the eyes closed and become aware of the sensations in the body. The heart space should feel energized because we've been breathing all of that prana into the chest. The third eye should be active feeling alive, buzzing in the forehead, sinuses clear. Feel that energy move around the body. And then opening the eyes. Take a big inhale on the exhale. So if you can sit and do that, like I would do that for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I would sit down, like you'll notice I'm sat on a cushion here. So I'm making sure that I'm going to be able to sit comfortably for, you know, a long period of time. So get yourself a cushion, sit up on a cushion. If you need two cushions, sit up on two cushions. But just try and keep the, the head on top of the shoulders, on top of the hips. And that should just keep, you know, if you're rolling back, you'll feel tension in the body. If you're leaning forward, you'll feel tension in the back as well. So just get that comfortable spot and just grab five or ten minutes where you just sit. You don't have to be on a yoga mat or be in yoga clothes or anything to do this. You just you can do it sat in the chair at the, at the table in between sips of your cup of tea. You know and what it'll do is it'll just center you in bring you back into focus clear the energy of the heart space and kind of this is the place that's looking around and making decisions for you all the time taking in the information before it gets up into the mind so having this open and clear is really good so that's your jai breath or victorious breath and um Give it a go. It's a great meditation as well as obviously if you can start to get it in when, when you're sat, you get used to that. And then when you start to bring it into your own physical practice, into your asanas, you've got that automatic sort of lift of them lower banders and lower energy locks, which is the pelvic floor lifted and the tummy in. And the chin is gently drawn back. So we have all three banders engaged, Muludhyana, Jalandhara. So when all three are engaged, connected with that breath, then, you know, we've, it's one banda, it's Maha banda. So you're really bringing that energy up through the body and you'll feel great after it. So like I say, give it five or ten minutes or even, you know, five or ten breaths. If that's what you're starting with and what you're getting used to, that's good. Just start slow until you get that connection with the pelvic floor and the tummy in and you can breathe into the thing. But the secret is remember the sound. The sound of that Darth Vader 
sort of sound in your mind and then just focus on that and feel that and it will really clear the mind for you and centre your back and it's a great little way of doing yoga without having to like, move all the furniture and I need some space you can do this, this is powerful yoga, it really is good stuff okay so our next breath is fire breath so this is a real cleanser, it brings heat up into the body and um, raises the kundalini energy which is this energy that lays at the base of the spine and lifts up so it's kind of um, you pump the tummy in as you exhale through the nose so it's like a, a, a snort almost it's like a but the inhale you just let the tummy relax and let the inhale come in so you're not going like this so pushing out and trying to pull back in so it's like a so I'm all, I'm allowing the breath to come back in through the mouth until and the belly when I release the belly it helps drop this this diaphragm here which again will assist the um, the, the inhalation because as that diaphragm drops it draws air in so it's like a Now you might need a tissue uh, for this, but if we've done the Ujjayi breath at the beginning and we've managed to move any mucus, then we well, maybe we'll be okay. So, again, this is a, a practice that I would do for 11 minutes anyway. I would do 11 minutes of this. I generally would do it in the morning as well. It's a Kriya, so um, I would generally do it in the morning to sort of raise my energy from that sleepy energy because I'm generally quite stiff in the morning because of general accidents and things I've had you know in my life so yoga comes along it frees me up and I bring the energy back into the body myself you can do this as a career by um, bringing like a mudra into the practice so you could have the arms out to the side with the with the palms facing away so the fingers are drawn back and they're pushing away with the fingers like this and you want the arms sort of back at shoulder height okay and then you would okay this is sat kriya so you would bring your hands into fire hands which is like this bring the hands up like this and then with the eyes closed as you're doing this you're thinking sat nam sat nam so it would be like sat on the exhale nam on the inhale so it'd be like sat nam sat nam and your eyes are closed and you would be focusing in the middle of the forehead so it would be like this so you see how that it's like but I'm not if I was going like this eventually I would kind of hyperventilate and go really dizzy and this is quite powerful anyway it's going to you know it's going to raise a lot of energy up in the body anyway so when you sit at the end of it so after we would complete however long that we're going to do it the final inhale we would hold so say we're doing sat kriya we have the hands like this it would be uh, and the final inhale I would hold bring the hands down to the knees so you notice when you first hold the breath it's kind of here and then I would try and swallow that breath so it feels like it drops down and into my tummy like that okay and we're going to carry on holding that breath so it would be And then exhale so we would hold that just for a few seconds maybe a few more than that but at this time this is when you really start to feel that sort of lift and rush of energy so if you need to breathe just release the breath and, and just come back to normal breath but stay seated and then really connect with the breath because sometimes it's almost like a dizzy feeling like a buzzing feeling because there's so much prana in the body it can be a little bit um 
alien, you know, it can make you feel a bit, oh my God, what's happening? So don't worry, just sit still and take nice, big, deep breaths. And eventually that will just slow down and come down and, and, and eventually into a quiet. Okay, so let's do Sat Kriya while we're doing the fire breath. So remember that is that, so if you put your hand on the tummy and then pull your tummy in, That's kind of what you're looking for. Okay, so bring the hands into fire hands and raise the hands. So remember now with the eyes closed, focusing on the forehead, lift the pelvic floor, and you're as you exhale it's sat, as you inhale it's now. So when you're ready, inhale and go. Inhale, hold, bring the arms down, swallow the breath down into the tummy and hold. Exhale out the mouth, slowly lean forward. And inhale, come back up to seated, relax the shoulders down the back, close the eyes. And now just take nice deep inhalations and exhalations. So you want the exhalation to be as long as the inhalation. Nice big full breaths. Every exhalation just try and relax. Let go of any tension in the body, any tension in the mind. And then open the eyes, take a big inhale and a nice sigh on the exhale. So you can see just in that, not even a minute that we did it there, how powerful that is, the energy that, that is created in the breath when you hold the breath and then you let it go, just then physical sensations in the body. So I wouldn't suggest to just try and go for 11 minutes on your first go. I would try to go for a minute say and then as you get used to this sensation and this energy that you sort of bring up into the body then start to you know add a little bit more time to it a little bit more time to it but really don't go just I'm going 11 minutes here one your arms are going to be just dying you know you'll be lucky to be able to get to 11 minutes and two you, you could just overload you know too much too soon so just think, start slowly, a minute, couple of minutes, see how you get along and then build up on that. And also, you know, if you you happen to be, you know, um, somebody who's going to teach this as well, you know, if you're a teacher and you're going to actually teach this, you have to understand that, you know, you might have this in your own practice. You know, you might sit down and have a whole bunch of careers and things like that, you know, and pranayama breath work in your practice. But the chances are your students aren't you know so if you start like right we're doing 11 minutes you could end up with really overloading them and, and some people just aren't ready for that explosion of energy so be careful is what i'm trying to say start slow build yourself up to it and and you will get better and stronger at it as you do it but again you know also think of your students so if you're going to do it in a class only do you know, like a minute, say, and then, you know, and if you want to do more pranayama, then, you know, do some other breath work in the class. But, you know, the powerful ones like that, just a little bit at a time, slowly, slowly. And, uh, you know, everybody will benefit from it. But if you go in too hard, too fast, you can really, you know, put people into anxiety, which is not what we're trying to do as yoga teachers at all. Okay, so our next breath is 
um, alternate nostril breathing, so Nadi Shadona. So what this is, is your right nostril feeds the left hand side of your brain and your left nostril feeds the right hand side of your brain. There's this crossover of, of breath. And what that is for is to keep the two hemispheres of the, of the brain nicely balanced out and, and working together. So the left brain is logic and mathematics and, you know, problem solving and things like that, you know, um, where the right brain is very much like music and art and, you know, poetry and, and creative things and that side. This is the logical brain. This is the, you know, the creative brain, if you like. So you'll notice if you just close your eyes now and start to inhale and exhale in and out through the nose. Now don't, you don't have to do anything other than breathe normally here. So just breathe normally in and out through the nose. And if you bring your awareness to the inhalation, you'll notice you will be inhaling through both nostrils, but there will be significantly more going in one nostril than the other. And then as you exhale, you'll notice how the nostril that wasn't doing as much on the inhale has more coming out on the exhale. So it'll feel more air going into the left side, say, and as you exhale, more air coming out of the right side. So this is a cycle that works in the body. It's just a cycle that's in there that's to keep us balanced and, and you know, so we can be creative and, and, you know, have these great ideas, but also be balanced enough to be able to bring them into existence, into the, you know, into the physical. So there needs to be a balance between the two. <clears throat> so, and, but if you have like, um, so this lasts about 40 minutes and then it flips over and you will inhale more through the other nostril and exhale more out the other nostril. And that is just keeping this, little tip over balance of keeping the, the two hemispheres of the brain just nicely oxygenated up and working in tandem together. So this is kind of when you get a cold and you, you get all congested here, you've no energy, it just all of your energy is gone because the brain isn't getting balanced and oxygenated. So therefore the energy and the messages aren't getting through because and we just feel like, oh, it's all over. So how this works is we're going to have um, the thumb and the first finger on the left hand joined together and that hand down onto the knee. And then the first two fingers, like the middle finger and, and the first finger, sit on the forehead here, just on the third eye like this. And then your thumb and ring finger, they like open and close your nostrils. I'll explain. So the third eye here, and so I would inhale fully, exhale, and then with my ring finger, I close my left nostril, and I inhale through the right nostril for a count of eight. Then I would hold that breath for a count of eight, and then close the right nostril with my thumb, and exhale through the left nostril for a count of eight. And then inhale for a count of eight, hold for a count of eight, and exhale out of the right nostril for a count of eight. So that would be one, one round. You've gone in and out and then in and out. So it, obviously this done repet repetitively means that we're really oxygenating the brain and, and getting it balanced out and working in harmony with all of the hemispheres of the brain. Which means then we're thinking straight, we've got energy, we're emotionally good, you know, all of these sort of things. Okay, so let's go for it. Thumb and first finger together on the left hand, hand down to the knee, first two fingers onto the third eye. Take an inhale, exhale fully, close the left nostril, inhale, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold the breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close your right nostril. Exhale. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the left nostril, exhale through the right nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And bring the hand down, return to normal breathing. Take a big inhale. And a nice long sigh on the exhale. Okay, so that is that would be one round. So this time we're going to do three rounds. Okay, so two fingers on the forehead, thumb and first finger together on the left hand. Big inhale. Exhale fully. Close the left nostril, inhale through the right nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the right nostril, exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale through the left nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the left nostril, exhale through the right nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale through the right nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Close the right nostril. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale through the left nostril. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the left nostril. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the right nostril. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hold. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Close the left nostril. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And bring the hand down. Take a big inhale. Fill yourself all the way up. And a big sigh on the exhale. And again, just sit into your silence. Become aware of the sensations in your head, maybe, in the body. And open the eyes. Again, take a big inhale, fill yourself all the way up, and a nice big long sigh on the exhale. So, again, you feel how breath makes the body feel a completely different way again. So, our last breath is the three part energy breath. So, I like this one because it just involves a lot of lying around on the floor so a cushion is really good for this so you want the cushion underneath your hips so it's keeping your hips high and then you just want to lie back lay the shoulders back so their hips are just being lifted up off the floor and then just get yourself nice and comfortable so this is a three stage breath. What I mean by that is it's a, we, we take a full inhalation, full exhalation. And then as I, the first, we break the inhalation into three stages. So the first part of the inhalation, I would imagine 
it's coming down to below the belly but so I'm breathing imagine and I'm breathing into this space here so that means the belly doesn't fill up and the chest doesn't fill up I want to keep this down so and then I'm going to hold that for just a couple of seconds then the second part of the inhalation is into the tummy so the belly would fill up but the chest doesn't rise and fill so I've split the two breaths so first part of the breath below the belly button so I can engage the core muscles here and imagine that I'm pushing that down into into the pelvic bowl the second part into the belly and then again I would engage this I want to imagine that I'm really pushing this breath down into my body and then the third part would be where I'd fill myself all the way up you'd feel the chest the belly's full I'm completely full I can't get any more air into the body I just want to hold that but at the same time I want to take any tension out of my shoulders any tension out of my face all that for a couple of breaths and then exhale fully so I'd lift the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and exhale and then just return to gentle normal abdominal breathing <coughs> so that would be one round okay so now we're all lying comfortably let's begin so close your eyes take a big inhale fill yourself all the way up fill the belly up fill the chest up exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body don't let any stay in push it all out when you think it's all gone have that final little push and then inhale the first part of the breath to below the belly button so the belly doesn't fill up the chest doesn't rise imagine that you're pushing that breath down into the pelvis inhale into the belly the belly starts to fill but the chest doesn't rise and then again it engage them core muscles as if you're really trying to capture that breath and hold it where it is don't let any escape back up and then inhale fully fill yourself all the way up belly's full chest is full hold that breath relax the face relax the shoulders hold the breath exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in push all of that stale air out and return to just normal breathing okay so we're going to do three rounds so take a big inhale fill yourself all the way up fill the belly up fill the chest up as much air as you can possibly get in exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body don't let any stay in let it all go and then inhale the first part of the breath to below the belly button engage the core muscles feel that breath down there don't let the belly fill up hold the breath inhale into the tummy fill the belly up you may feel the floating ribs start but don't let the chest rise hold that breath engage the core push that down into the body we want to try and get every bit of prana out of this we can inhale into the chest fill yourself all the way up hold that breath relax the face relax the shoulders take another little sniff and hold and exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body don't let any stay in there let it all go and then return to gentle abdominal breathing eyes are closed just be aware of the sensations in the body as we start to really push the energy out through the fingertips now we're really starting to move the energy outward into the body you'll feel that as you hold my breath tingling sensations in your hands maybe in your feet your face so inhale fully fill yourself all the way up fill the belly up fill the chest up as much air as you can possibly get in and exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body when you think it's all gone have that final little push and then inhale the first third of the breath to below the belly button hold that breath there relax the body just hold the breath inhale into the tummy fill the belly up hold that breath engage the core push that deep down into the body 
inhale fully fill yourself all the way up fill the belly up fill the chest up feel the collarbones lift up hold the breath relax the shoulders relax the face and exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body let it all go don't let any of that old carbon monoxide stay in there and then return to gentle abdominal breathing so in an ideal world you would breathe like that all the time you would fill the lung all the way up and you would empty the lung all the way out and you would fill the lung up and you would empty it all out but we don't this is back to them little short breaths that we talked about earlier it's like when we're under stress we get little short breaths then we're not getting enough oxygen into the body the body manifests that as stress as tension because really we only breathe in like the first third of the breath generally is enough to work a computer keyboard or to make a cup of tea or to you know we, it's not a big physical ass so the lungs don't get things so the bottom two thirds of the lung are basically just filled with you know bad gas we've, we've extracted anything out of it that we wanted and now it's just sat there so um, filling it up and emptying it out we give the lungs a good clear out so our final round take a big inhale fill yourself all the way up as much air as you can get in there your mind body connection will be getting really strong and then exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body don't let any stay in there push 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 inhale the first third of the breath to below the belly button hold that breath there engage the core it's like trying to hold a football underwater it's trying to get up or keep it pushed down inhale into the tummy fill the tummy up hold that breath there and again engage push that down onto the first breath inhale fully fill the chest up as much air as you can possibly get in relax the shoulders relax the face have another little sniff and hold And exhale fully pull up on the pelvic floor draw the belly button in and up push all of that stale air out of the body don't let any stay in and then just return to gentle abdominal breathing eyes are closed and just become aware of the sensations in the body when you're ready just hugging your knees into your chest come into a seated position back on your mat or onto your cushion There you go. So, thank you very much for your time. I hope you really enjoyed the class. I mean, pranayama is a yoga all of its own, and you, you can go really deep into it, and, and it's amazing what you can do. It's all sorts of healing and, and clearing of energy, and it can also, like, you know, things like, you know, if you have a broken leg or something like that, if you can really get some good oxygen into your body and get that flowing around your body, it aids the healing. It's like your own little hyperbaric chamber that you create by bringing more oxygen into your system. Oxygen is what does all that healing in the body. It creates all of that good stuff in the body. So that's just four. And um, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know when I'm doing any more videos, hit the bell and you will get told when the next video is. And please subscribe. It really helps the channel. I'm super grateful for everybody who watches. And see you on the next video. All day, all night.